Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope everybody's having a great day. In this video, we are going to talk about the Elrond network, the latest IEO coming out from the Binance Launchpad. So this was only announced a couple of days ago and the sale has already commenced. Have you looked into Elrond yet? Are you confused by what it is, where you can use it, or what it means for the crypto space as a whole? Well, don't worry whether you're new to crypto or you've been around for a while, you've just not got a chance to look into this yet. I will be taking a look and breaking it down as simply as possible for you. So grab yourself a beer, sit back, relax, whilst I explain Elrond Network. Hey everyone, I'm Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. We're all about sharing enjoyable, informative and easy to follow information without shilling any projects in particular. Just our research and honest opinions. All the sources I've used for putting this video together will be included in the description below. So make sure you use them to check out uh, my work and also to do your own due diligence. If you enjoy this video, please make sure that you give us a thumbs up. If you don't, then you know what to do. If you wanna come back to the channel and see more of our videos, why not subscribe? And you can hit the bell icon below to receive notifications of all of our new content when we upload it. The main aim of the Elrond network is to achieve a minimum of 10,000 transactions per second with minimal latency and negligible transaction fees and at the same time ensuring that the network is fast, efficient, scalable, and interoperable. The network achieved this by what they have coined as adaptive state sharding. They are currently focusing on high throughput use cases, for example, DEXs, DAPs, and payment, uh, and payment networks. The project uses something called secure proof of stake and also makes use of the practical Byzantine fault tolerance consensus model. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on in the video. Okay, so there's a few things in that last statement that I know some of you aren't gonna be aware of. So I'll go into them in a little bit more detail um, whilst trying to be as quick as possible. So the first thing we will talk about is secure proof of stake. Now being proof of stake, this saves on energy and computational power in comparison to proof of work. But alongside that, there are four key elements that makes secure proof of stake slightly different. So the selection process relies on both state and rating. So this selection method has a sort of inbuilt resistance to Sybil-like attacks. Secondly, it uses PBFT or the practical Byzantine fault tolerance consensus model. But we, as I said previously, we'll get into that in a little bit. The network is subjected to random sampling that increases security. And finally, the rewards and penalties mechanism that incentivizes um, working on behalf of the network. Okay, so a little bit more on PBFT. So PBFT is a solution to the BFT problem. The BFT consensus model will allow a system to continue to work even if part of that system is corrupt. Part of that system goes down, whether it's malicious or whether it becomes damaged. It's used in air traffic control and airplanes, um, and it just allows the, the system or the network to continue running. The PBFT assumes that some of the network is acting maliciously or is corrupted. So it adds extra checks into the round to ensure that the data coming through is correct. In the case of Elrond, it works like this. If consensus is achieved in two communication rounds and in under six seconds, then a block is produced. If not, then no block is produced. This is also done per shard. And this leads us on to adaptive state sharding. So adaptive state sharding consists of three layers of sharding. The network layer, the state layer, and the transaction layer. And this allows the blockchain to scale horizontally. Under adaptive state sharding, the network will regularly rebalance itself depending on the number of nodes live on the network. So the nodes will get reshuffled into shards that will splinter off and are responsible for their own individual data. So that was a little bit more of an in-depth look at the project. Obviously, if you want more information and you want to go out there and do your own research, which I actively encourage you to do so, I have included all the links from my research in the description below. 
Um, this includes the official site, Telegram, and various other channels that I've used. So go out there and, and have a look and definitely have a read of the white paper. Now that we've had a look at the project, why don't we dive in a little bit deeper and have a look at the people behind the scenes that make it all work. Now there are 18 people currently on the website listed as official team members. So that's a little bit more than I really want to go into in any great depth. So I've just picked a couple that we shall talk about briefly and then we shall move on to the advisors. So we're going to start with Ben, Lucian and Lucian. All three are co-founders of the Elrond Network. Previously, Ben and Lucian founded ICO Market Data together in 2017, as well as MetaChain Capital. So we know how these two know each other. And if you do dig into the team, you will notice there is a crossover in a couple of businesses between quite a few of the, the team members in the Outeron network. Ben was also the business lead over at NEM for just over a year. Um, so he's been in the space for a little while and he definitely has some connections. Lucian number two founded soft32.com. He actually founded it almost 18 years ago um, and it's been up and running ever since. So that's pretty impressive. And since starting up that project, he's actually invested in quite a few relatively successful technology startups over the years as well. We have Felix, who is the head of research and has previously worked for Hewitt Packard and IBM. Now we have Radu, who holds a PhD in computer science. He's published several papers, which you can find on Google Scholar, which is also in the list of sources below. Um, I've actually spoken to Radu and a couple of the team members on Telegram whilst researching this video, asking lots and lots of questions about the project, the technology behind it, and probably a few stupid questions as well. But they have been really, really helpful. They've been really, really nice. I'm really, really patient with me. Um, so massive shout out to you guys for helping me out with this with this video. Thank you. Now, as I said, I can't mention everyone, but what I will do is just throw some of the names out of the businesses that the team have worked with in the past um, as previous employers or just, you know, making software for various different companies. And they include Microsoft, Google, Intel, Hewitt Packard, IBM, Sony and possibly Samsung, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. Now that's a pretty impressive group of employers. Um, and they obviously have very high standards when it comes to their employees. So you know that the developers are doing pretty well. Now, if we fast forward to the advisors, we have some relatively heavyweight entrepreneurs, investors, researchers, and developers, all of which will be bringing their wealth of experience and knowledge to fruition for the team. We have a core developer from Ethereum. We have two members of the City of Zion and Nex. We have some angel investors. Um, we have an entrepreneur from Fitbit. So there's like brand identity, there's technology, there's a, you know uh, Ethereum developers and there's economics in there as well, if I remember correctly. Now let's talk about the roadmap and some partnerships. Their partnerships include Nash, which is formerly known as Nex, Typing DNA, Smart Bill, DSRL, which is the Decentralized Science Research Lab, I think, um, and Netopia Payments. Now, no doubt there's going to be a lot more partnerships for a project that's going to be sort of incubated by Binance. Um, you know, CZ is all about networking and I'm sure there's going to be some sort of closed room conversations that are definitely going to benefit uh, both Binance and other associated projects as well as the Elrond network. In terms of the roadmap we are fast approaching quarter three and this will mean the conclusion of the Binance IEO as well as uh, listing of ERD tokens on Binance. We will have the public testnet launch virtual machine, VM integration, a release of a game, as well as the announcement of the token economics. Now by token economics, I mean the reward and penalties for, um, you know, for staking, as well as the cost of staking, how much exactly it will take for you to be able to run a node and all of the relative information before the mainnet is released in quarter four, 2019. 
Also, something else to look forward to is the first quarter of 2020, they are aiming to launch their own decentralized exchange. Now the bit that you have probably been waiting this whole time to find out about, and that's the Binance Launchpad. How's it gonna work? How do you get in? And any other questions that you may have. The Binance Launchpad will be running as a lottery. That means that you will have to be holding Binance tokens and you will also have to be a level two verified Binance user. This means that you've gone through their KYC process. To be eligible for a ticket, you must hold an average of 50 Binance tokens between the 21st of June to the 1st of July. If you do this, you will be allocated a ticket. Now, it's actually pretty simple. Now, in my opinion, I don't think it's particularly accessible to most users. Firstly, you have the requirement that you are level two and you are willing to verify your identity on Binance. Secondly, you have to be holding an average of 50 Binance tokens to be eligible for one ticket. Now, that's not a huge amount for anybody that's got absolutely massive bags, um, but for your average retailer, you know, $1,900 just to be eligible for a ticket is quite an expensive amount. Now, obviously, you can sell the Binance tokens once the lottery is concluded and the lottery tickets themselves don't actually cost you anything. It's just an agreement that you will enter into a purchase order of $300 worth of the token. Okay, let's have a look at the Launchpad sort of tokenomics, if you will. The hard cap for the Launchpad is 3.25 million US dollars. The total token supply is 20 billion with a launchpad allocation of 5 billion. That's 25% of the total supply. There will be a maximum of 10,833 winning tickets. Each individual ticket will be allocated $300 worth of ERD tokens, which equates to 460,000. The private sale allocation was a further 19% and raised a 1.9 million US dollars. All tokens will be distributed to users 15 days after allocation. Okay, so here's the bit where I get to share my thoughts and feelings after looking into and researching this project. Now, of course, this is only my opinion and you are more than welcome to agree or disagree with me in the comments below. In terms of a short-term flip, this coin has massive potential for anybody that gets in in the IEO. I think it's gonna be an easy five to 10 times ROI. For anybody else that doesn't get in the IEO, I would recommend holding out for a couple of days until it stabilizes somewhere near the original price and then scoop some up whilst you can. Um, if we look at Matic, which is a similar project that launched a couple of months ago, it did have an all time high of 10 times its original ICO price. It's definitely worth keeping an eye on. The only real concerns that I have are about two of the founders um, and that's just because from their work history they seem to flit about um, you know they've they've started a couple of projects and moved on very quickly so I don't want to feel if I'm an investor that they're gonna up and leave the project in a year's time but I wouldn't even say that's a huge concern and overall I'm actually quite positive and excited about this project it does have a huge amount of competition already and nobody really knows who's going to come out on top now I would hedge my bets and invest a little in all of them just to be safe another another thing that I found interesting is I feel as if this whole launchpad IEO is actually a little bit rushed and was probably a bit of a surprise for the team when you look back, they did have a community um, project, social mining, which is basically bounty programs, um, but that got shut down all of a sudden. People haven't been able to log in, um, and this has been because it's been shut down for the launch pad. Well, if they knew they were going to be part of the launch pad, why would they have started that and then just shut it down very, very abruptly? So what I think has happened is that they have reached out to Binance Labs during the private sale, and they have consequently been offered the launch pad, which they were probably a little bit unprepared for. And thus everything has been a bit of a rush and like pushed through um, with the announcement and then the commencement of the launch pad IEO. So as I said, I'm actually hoping to pick some up during the IEO or if I don't get some then I will be watching it very closely for a buying opportunity. Let me know what you feel about the Aron network in the comments below. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for sticking with me all the way through. If you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications of when we upload videos. I've been Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Take care.